All right, Kay, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Kay? Hang on one second. All right, now I can hear you good. Okay. Oh, good. We finally found... Okay, you there? I'm here. All right, perfect. All right. The beauty of technology. Don't yeah, don't anybody move. I know. Good gravy. Well, the good news, AT&T is working. As, as, I'm, as we're getting rolling, I'm going to just uh, throw a different piece on my, uh, on my, on my phone so I can uh, stand here. But hey, so introduce yourself to, to, to us. And uh, who, who are you? And, and where do you reside? Who am I? Um, real estate broker. This is my 44th year. And it seems like kind of yesterday. Almost like a real job. I yeah. um, live in Santa Paula, California, which is a um, one of 11 communities in Ventura County. Very rural agriculture, some growth, not much, but still a very pretty place to live when you consider um, the building that's going around um, in many of the cities in Ventura County today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what... Uh... So, so how long have you been in the business? Uh, this is my 44th year, continuous. Uh, there was a time when um, I, well, I had said very early in my youth that I would never be in real estate. And so it provokes the adage that you should never say what you'll never do because here I am. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Excellent. Well, um, so talk just a little bit about, uh, all right, there we go. So, so talk just a, a little bit about just your, your history. Just get, give us a little insight to some of the things that you're doing. I know that you are not someone who uh, wants to be braggadocious or someone who's trying to put themselves, in fact, you're so far from that, it's incredible. In fact, I know that you have such a great passion for uh, God's children and for helping them and assisting them and blessing their lives. Give just a perspective of the work. I know that you've been a perspective of what you do, because I know that you've been highlighted in a number of different ways, but there's gonna be a lot of people on this call that don't really have a perspective of the things that you do. And, uh, and then we'll get into, because it's, it's the, it's the two questions I keep sharing with people to ask, and that is, how are you doing and how can I help you? And I think that you are one of the most incredible examples in regards to doing that and helping people. So just give us a little bit of insight as to just a little bit of what you do, what your, what your life looks like and how you serve and how you give back. And then, of course, we'll jump into real estate. But I think it's important people hear that perspective. Well, there are only two commandments, you know, and that's we're to love God with all of our hearts. And the other one is we're to love others the way we love ourselves. And we've all had defining moments in our life. And one defining moment for me was Christmas Eve 2008, when I was on a chaplain call with Ventura County Fire Department, and we discovered that a homeless man had died in one of our churches. And we, oh, wow. didn't, we didn't even know we had homeless people at that time. And the irony of that is when you look back at the, what the economy was like in 2008, 9, and 10, a lot of suffering going on, and we didn't know we had homeless people. And you look at the economy today, pre-COVID, of course, and how did we ever get to have this many homeless people with the economy that we've all enjoyed these last 10 or 12 years? So that, that's a question that remains unanswered for me. But that defining moment um, was I was put in that place for a reason, and that was to start a program to rescue these people. It's true that some homeless people do not want to be rescued. They don't want to interfere with their habits, their lifestyle. They want to be the lone ranger out at the railroad tracks or the river. But there are many who were sabotaged by the economy and needed to have a safety net. And that began a movement within the community and then within the county where at that time we had a 10 year um, program to end homelessness. And so we started with a hot meal with 57 people attending that and it grew to where we now have 600 coming for um, a hot meal on Wednesday. We have a homeless shelter now. 
do a lot with food rescue. 25% of the food that's produced oh. in America goes to the landfill. And that is just a tragedy when you think about the, the cost of living and the poverty that's actually around us. And if you don't live in a community that is slightly impoverished, it's hard to understand what hunger is like. So uh, we work with food rescue. We put about 40,000 pounds last month of food into our households. We have many food insecure people in this valley. And I think now with COVID-19 around us, there are probably many more food insecure people than we'd like to admit, particularly in the vulnerable areas of our senior citizens and those you know, who are homebound. Absolutely. So it's amazing. How, how, it's, give a perspective yeah. of either on a daily or weekly or even annual basis of, uh, and describe a little bit of what you've created in your kitchen and different things that you've done. And the way that you're giving back, the way that you're serving and the way it's blessing not only your lives, but theirs. Well, it's being willing to be put in places where God wants to put you. Um, I met a woman about a year ago who, um, atheist, cantankerous, a warrior, quite opposite of me, but we struck up a friendship <laughs> and she said, um, if you ever find a good investment in a, in a building, let me know. So we discovered um, online a building, a bar, um, an old restaurant, about a 4,500 square foot building that was in foreclosure, in bankruptcy, and um, had been abandoned essentially. So she bought it and we decided to turn it into a homeless shelter and she actually ended up giving the building to our nonprofit, which is Spirit of Santa Paula, paid $500,000 for it and just deeded it over to us. And so we have wow. a commitment, of course, to her to secure that building for the sake of others for as long as we can. And it is That's now a homeless shelter. We've had um, over 3,000 guest nights, and that's how you measure it. One person per night is one guest night. So one person, okay. 30 nights is 30 nights of um, safe sleep. And so um, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, yesterday, one of the women who's in a wheelchair decided she wanted to go to Fillmore to visit her truck, and she didn't come back all day. And we have rules now where if you leave the shelter, because we have a shelter in place rule, you can't come back. And so seven o'clock last night, she calls from Fillmore. She'd been out all day with somebody, we don't know who, been at McDonald's, been around town. She wanted us to come pick her up because she wanted to come back to the shelter now. So what do you do? I don't know where she's been. The rules are, if you leave, you can't come back. So I'm not gonna tell you what we did because not everybody would agree with it. But um, those are just the challenges. You're dealing with real people who are homeless and have- how many, Yeah, how, how, many, how many people a week or a day or a year are you feeding? Or how many meals are you providing with dollars that you're contributing, dollars that you're raising? How many meals are you providing? I mean, you know, it just, it's just so inspiring to me because I know that we're so, we're in such a society and such a world where we're so consumed with so much of ourselves, what we're trying to achieve, what we're trying to acquire, what we're trying to have, how we're trying to look. And there's so much to your point that's done behind the scenes that no one ever gets to see that you're doing and others that are assisting you, uh, these little mortal angels that are just all around helping you. What does that look like? How many people are you serving per day, per week, per year? Well, we have 29 people in the shelter now and we've had to whittle it down because where there were so many children. So we've been able to move about 19 um, people through the shelter into some more supportive services, which is what we should do. Right now we only have two children, but we have two coming today. And it's about 150 meals a day. And some days it's more than that because people will come out of the track and out of the river and they want to be fed. And we do feed them. It reduces panhandling, um, reduces theft, and it makes them healthier. And right. So you're, so you're, you're feeding like a thousand people or thousand meals per week, like three or 4,000 or more, maybe even per, per month. That's, that's incredible. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things I didn't do is that sometimes, you know, what's interesting to me, someone like UK is you have these incredible levels of success in charitable work for God's children. And 
yet, you know, a lot of people say, well, wait a second though, but is she, is she doing really well in real estate? And you're someone who does extremely well. I mean, I don't know how many centurions you have. At one point, of course, you were even a, a, a broker owner of many Century 21s. Uh, you, you've had a, a, a career that is truly a legacy and you've done some very extraordinary things. Uh, and every single year, uh, of course, you're, you're hitting centurion or above and truly not only in the real estate world making an incredible you know, difference, but you're making an incredible difference in just your community and the way that you give back. It's, it's truly touching and inspiring at every level. So let me, let, let's switch gears for a moment. What, what advice would you give? And I know that you and Danette spoke for a moment and, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask this question, but it's a question frankly asked of even Danny Morell yesterday. What counsel would you give? I mean, you've led agents from a brokerage standpoint, you've sold a ton of real estate, you serve valiant, valiantly in the community. What advice would you give to an agent? What would you share today or counsel would you give to an agent that, especially maybe one who, uh, even let's just speak to the fact of whether it's Utah or California, that is a little bit down, is a little bit discouraged, is a little bit, you know, just in their place of struggle. And then of course there's people who are doing really, really well and the question really comes about is what should they be doing, right? What, what's the difference that they should be making in, in the communities in which they live in? So would love your counsel, advice, your, your wisdom of these many years you've been in the business. When I started in the business, I had moved from Santa Barbara to Santa Paula and I did not know anybody. And I realized if I was going to make it in real estate, I had married somebody in the business, so I had to, you know, sort of get with it. And I decided I was going to get to know people. And I went on a social um, platform at that time, which was joining every single um, worthy cause that there was. I knocked on doors one time and I called a for sale by owner one time. I was discouraged, I got my feelings hurt, and I said, I am not gonna do business like this. So I decided to join every organization and serve where I could, and I got to know people. And I don't recommend this for every agent because there are things you have to do. Okay, okay, are you just, um, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's me, I'm having the hardest time hearing you. Um, I wanna just put me really okay. Um, and I'm hoping everyone's able to hear you right now. Maybe it's just me. So let's, let's, let's try that. Try that. Try that again. Is it, keep, keep, uh, if you can hear both. I'm just saying they can So keep on going. That's great. So I never attended a monetary seminar. I don't know that I'd recommend that for new agents, but I had to do what worked for me. Knocking on doors and calling for sale by owners was not in my DNA. So I just chose another path and I decided that I was going to be an early adapter to new ideas. I think I had the first fax machine. I had the first cell phone. And um, I decided to find things that were working when I was not. Um, so for today's agents, find things that work in the background. If agents aren't using golden ruler with the Century 21 system, you are missing the most beautiful tool. It provides a weekly update to your clients with information you could never create. I use um, ad dividers um, that are in the grocery stores. So you put your little plastic holder between the groceries to separate who's buying what. Um, and that works 24 seven. I'd love MLS where it's the contact you set up. If somebody's looking for a particular home, particular price, particular area, set it up so they get automatic responses when there's a new one. I love AdWorks. That's a very helpful tool through Century 21 as well. I buy zip codes. And so when somebody from a particular zip code goes to the Wall Street Journal, my ad pops up and they are so impressed to think I actually advertise in the Wall Street Journal. New York Times, LA Times, YouTube, Yahoo. There's just amazing places where those ads are effective. I wear my name badge all the time. I hand out cards. So I told God if I was going to be in this 
And we did have that conversation. If I was going to be called to this service, he had to provide for my family. And so we provided tools. And the happiest day of my life was when uh, Century 21 Everest bought um, the previous company because it gave me a real credible company and a name to rely on when I'm doing my business so that I could um, have confidence in the systems and the people running the company. So that was also a good day. Do you have to find systems that work for you? It has to be a career. It's not a job. And for new agents, I would tell them to look at the long view, do all the steps you need to in the mid way so that when you finally get that little measure of confidence and success, you then float right into your career because it's a lifetime career. And oh my gosh, it's has saved my family a couple of times. And one of the stories that real estate will do is provide the wealth that you hope to have when you retire so that you're not working as hard. And uh, in 1992, I lost my home to foreclosure. And um, I couldn't even make this up if it weren't true. In 1998, I was able to buy the same house back. And oh, wow. I attempted over the years to upgrade and move on to you know, the house on the hill, but I felt like God gave it to me twice and I was not going to take a chance with it. So um, um, we're still here. Uh, what you see in the background is a plotter. It's my husband's plotter. He works out of the house. He's 87. And in this COVID environment, I've had to be very mindful of the places I go every day. And when I come home, change clothes in the garage throw it in the washer so that I'm not bringing any contamination in the house. Life is so different now. You know, America has experienced what life is like for people in other parts of the world who live like this on a daily basis. We're really spoiled and really fortunate that we have yes. the ability to counteract anything that's going on around us. So that was a long answer. What, to the new yeah, no, it's fantastic. What, what, share, share with us, how would you encourage someone who is right now either fearful to your point, life has changed, fearful of the the challenges that we're currently dealing with, the COVID uh, challenges of lockdowns, you know, feeling like just that the feelings that we're all feeling, we're all feeling them very differently. What counsel would you give in ways which in which people could serve today? What would you encourage someone to do? Well, there are two questions there. One, if they're fearful, you know, this has not surprised God. I don't know what he's going to do with this event, but I think he's showing us that family's important. We can survive at home. We can work from home. Look at the tools we've implemented to kind of compensate for what we think we're missing. Um, the other counsel is to um, take care of family first. If that falls apart on you, you know, you have no safety net. Um, Take care of your um, well-being. If you're drinking too much, you've got to stop that. That was something I stopped 20 years ago. Um, first of all, being a chaplain, I never wanted to say to a dispatcher, sorry, I can't go because I've had too much wine. And right. I want to tell addicts, you can stop using, you can stop drinking because I've done it myself. Another thing is that... Um, in defining moments, our daughter died of a drug overdose in 2012. And I had started all of this work before that happened, but the event preceding that gave me the courage to help other parents who have um, you know, lost children. And you never know what's gonna be put on your plate, but you have to be emotionally well enough to take whatever's handed to you. And this virus, in the environment we're in, we've got to be mindful of how others are feeling. Um, I don't know why people are going to the beach. I do not understand why they want to take a chance on the fact that they could get sick and someone giving it to their family. There are stories of children who have died together in the hospital. I just don't want anybody I know to go through that. But when you do, sure. you have to have a source from inside that will get you through anything. And we're not to be fearful. One of the things that Jesus said more than anything is stop fearing. Do not be afraid for I am with you. Easier said than done, but if you practice it, it becomes real in your life. And then you can discover that wealth of strength that you didn't know you had. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I keep talking about it. If God is within you, right, that you're able to find that center and you're able to move through with gratitude. And the only way that you truly express gratitude, yes, you can speak it, you can feel it, but really is you express it and you express it by the service and your love to others, which is, is such a, a tribute to you, what you do with your life. And what I know that so many people who are inspired by your work and who are uh, trying to follow in many of the same footsteps of helping people and serving. And, you know, I, I, I've said these words recently and I have said, look, let's not complicate it. For, for many of us, it might be just going through the drive through and paying for the car behind us or the local Starbucks and paying for their, you know, coffee or tea behind us. It's, there's, there's such simple things that we can do to give, to serve, to love. But I think you said something really, really profound, Kay, and that is, is that you said family first. You talked about making sure you take care of your family. And I know a number of people uh, that can relate. We had a, an agent in, in Utah most recently here in the last five weeks who uh, their 14-year-old uh, son passed away uh, from some heart issues. And I mean, just in tragic beyond measure, I mean, but they found him that morning and he had passed away uh, while he was sleeping. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so when you, when you start looking at those types of losses, and you start thinking how fast we try to move and how, how, how hurriedly we go about life. What counsel would you give to a family? I mean, you've seen extreme loss and I don't, I, okay, tell us how many, how many children do you have? Is that your, was that your only child or do you have any other children? All right, actually, I didn't have children of my own. Um, this is my husband's daughter. Okay. And, um, I'm from a family of six kids, and I don't know why I didn't have any. You, you've, you'd had enough. You'd had enough kids, and you you're yeah. probably being mom to all of them anyway. Yeah. So it would be my no, bet. I didn't. But, um, but, but, but what know. counsel would you give to a family? What What have you seen work from from your years in real estate? You you gosh you you've been so transparent. I mean, we're in such a business. We're always trying to look so good. Where, you know, we've lost homes. That's I, I've tried to share that in in 2008. You know, I was eight hours away from my home being lost. If it wasn't for someone giving me a few dollars and having a little bit of belief in my future, uh, today I'm fortunate enough to be in that same home. And there's a great love affair with that home because I know how someone made it possible for me. But I also remember uh, losing many other things, turning in my cars and all the different things where people go, oh, you know, there's this big company or, okay, you're doing so great. And look, you get all the awards. But what most people don't realize is the is the journey that that you've gone through, and I know that others are going that if they haven't, they're probably going to go through. What we're either going into a crisis, we're either in the crisis, or we're just about to come out of the crisis. So, what counsel would you give to a family? What would you say to to, to make that a priority? What would you say needs to be done? Well, you know, I'm a chaplain with the fire department, and I have seen things that I would never even tell anybody about um, when children die suicide particularly the counsel I give them is that um, they're going to be okay it won't be today it won't be tomorrow but this is a process and they have to find comfort and the things they love sometimes we counsel by being quiet just silence. Sitting with someone who has just lost a loved one is a great privilege and um, it's a great responsibility because saying the wrong thing could last for a lifetime. Um, Messaging is so part, important right now. Yeah, and the hardest part is when a baby dies. Um, sudden instant death is the worst because there's no explanation for it. And that is when you just sit and cry with them. Yeah. Quite honestly, you know, going back to you and your experience with your house and mine, you know, you we have to learn to humble ourselves. If we don't humble ourselves, God will do it to us. And, <laughs> and that is exactly. You know, I always say it's either be, it's nicer to be com it's nicer to just be humble or be compelled to be humble. I have to tell you, Kay, I was compelled. Me too. <laughs> and, it, and it was a good thing. I was compelled. Yeah. At the time, um, I was studying Job, and I said, you know, God, I want you to test me. See what, I, see what I'll do. Oh, you know, don't ever say that, because <laughs> he did. He took everything away. And um, when I go back to those dark days, um, I didn't think I was going to come through it, but 
there was light at the end of the tunnel. There was a time when I couldn't see color. It was all gray and it was all dark to me. And I'm sure that's a depression of the soul. But God didn't leave me there long. Um, he brought me out of it. But, oh, I never want to go back to those days. And that's why you never see me. I even hate to an accept award. I because it's no, I know I know you do. I have to force you to accept these things yeah, at times. It's not me. <laughs> and I have a story to tell and I was happy to share that today, but it's not about me. It's about what God will do through you. He'll take that hurt and he'll bless somebody else with it. I mean, you heard um um oh, who's our wonderful colleague in Oxnard that lost his son? Uh Vicente. Vicente. You've heard his story? Two two, two sons. Yes. I mean, how does somebody live through that without God just putting his arms around you and saying, I'm with you, fear not, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. I mean, that's the worst kind of pain, just the worst kind. But yeah. today, wonderful human, so God brought him through it, and he will do that because he promised he would. There's something about the internet in Utah at this time of day, I think, because now that's right. it's good. <laughs> so maybe... A sense should come a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I think we're doing okay because, gosh, well, you know what? I had Andrew Cuff, but many of you know Andrew, who I know reset the internet for uh, the entire building, and uh, Dwight Ricks got on it too. So thanks to those two getting us all dialed in and getting it done quick. Okay. So, so Kay, uh, with just, gosh, we, we it's crazy that we're, almost, we're pretty much out of time, but just what, what, what last counsel would you give to stay in the light, to stay positive, to... Uh, take action to to get out there, uh, which when I say get out there, that means picking up a phone, right? That means, you know, maybe doing a video, maybe doing a Zoom call, maybe giving a presentation in a certain way. How are you how are you transacting business today? And what how would you echo that counsel uh, to, uh, to those that uh, are in? You know, okay, there's a lot of people, even our own agents that are maybe already past that threshold where they were one deal away from not making car payments, a house payment, uh, one deal away from the confidence of knowing they can feed their family. Uh, these are real things. And, and, and within our own group, there's those challenges. So how, how, how would you counsel them? What advice would you give to that person? They have to set priorities. And if it means giving up the Lexus, the Mercedes on the lease, whatever it is, so that you can feed your family, do it. And you know, we're all designed to work. God created us to work. Garden came first. Love that. Love we're that. To work. So Say, that's that's the best counsel of the day, by the way, right there. And and not all work is fun, but all work is the same. Do the hardest thing you have to do first. Get it out of the way. Make that phone call to somebody you've kind of been dancing with and just see if that final connection doesn't do it. And it just might, if it doesn't, move on to the next one. Not all work is fun, but um, you can make fun out of work. And I look at every transaction as my next house payment. I've got a mobile home in Camarillo right now. My commission is gonna be about $1,000. Well, that's almost my next house payment. And I have to work just as hard at that to get it closed as I do one that went into escrow yesterday for over 800,000. So pick up the phone, do what you have to do. Don't put it off. It's all work. We're designed to work. Just do it. I love that, Kay. I love that. Kay, let me ask you a question. How are you selling real estate today? Are you doing most of it by Zoom? Are you doing most of it by phone? Is there a few occasions, I presume, where you are, you know, obviously practicing, you know, safe uh, social distancing, but I presume that you are going out on just a few different scenarios. Are you trying to do most of it, though, virtually and with the phone? Uh, yes and no. I have a listing in Oxnard that it's a mega fixer-upper, and so we have 22 offers on the property. Wow. So I like love that, by the way. Huh? I love hearing that. That's, you know, guys, hey, actually, okay, let me interject this. So in, in, in Utah, to give you perspective, there it's from April 1st to yesterday, 
389 homes in just Everest has gone under contract. In California, in our Everest operation, right, all of the, our Californians, is that we've put 129 deals under contract in California. There is business happening within this organization. And although California had a little bit of bigger blow with things that the the uh, governor did and then the local government did and, and that ping pong or that yo-yo match, there are still extraordinary things that are happening if you're willing to go out and work. And that's evident with what you're doing. But continue with your Oxnard and then we'll wrap up here. So the way, way I handled that is um, there's an occupant in the home and I scheduled 22 agents starting at 1230, 1240, 1250, all the way to four o'clock yesterday. It was a brutal wow. afternoon, but it's all work, right? Brutal afternoon. It was hot and um, had everybody put booties on, masks, gloves, and they went in. They had seven or eight minutes in the house. They had to come out. So that's, I mean, that's mega structure. I love it. Um, a neighbor came over and was going to call the police because I was having open house. And I said, you need to understand this is not open house. This is a structured showing environment. So I had to explain to her. She kind of made me nervous, actually. But um, so we were covered there. And I'm fortunate that I'm a strong listing broker. And so I let other people do the showing. And sure. I don't have to get out there too much. Um, when I show, it's two people in. I stand out if the owner's inside, and we're completely following practices. The last thing Love I it. ever wanted to somebody I came in contact with was sick or got sick because of something I did. But if right. we start, you know, we'll be remembered for being smart and being cautious and gracious, and it'll turn around. It always has. I mean, we think it will, right? How long have you been in the business? I don't think I caught, we caught that. How long yeah. have you, if you did say I, I, my, the internet was, how long have you been in the business? This is my 44th year. I love it. I love it. And you know what I love? I love watching your Instagram posts. I love what you're doing, Kay. I just hope you know how, how, how thrilled I am, how grateful I am that you're part of our lives and that you're doing what you're doing. And just, just such a, a beautiful example of, of what love service kindness can do and i think it's incredible i think it's so it's so incredible so so keep up the good work keep up doing what you're doing and, and continuing to bless the lives of people in the business and of course those within your community and just being an example and a light to so many people so thank you thank you thank you yeah we'll keep taking care of us okay we're trying to i you know what it's always a, we're we got some fun stuff uh, scheduled, guys. And if those of you, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. We've got some uh, really fun people coming to the table. John Maxwell, uh, Mel Robbins. Uh, we've even got uh, Brandon Bouchard, if you're, if you're interested in him, and Brian Tracy. So over the next four weeks, we're going to do some really fun things that we've become, we're part of a really fun mastermind. And all of us are chipping in just a few dollars to bring these wonderful people to, to be able to interview them and spend time with them and help us through these times to make sure we keep our mind right, our hearts right, and the actions that uh, will improve our lives and, and make life better. So, uh, Kay, thank you for everything. Have an extraordinary day. Stay safe. And thank you for your contribution and, and blessing the lives of people.